Hi Plant Friends, it's the end of summer Hoya tour. First Hoya is Hoya Ruthie. This summer I decided to keep almost all my Hoyas on the balcony where they're getting a lot of sun. Some of these Hoyas are getting about 5 hours of direct sun each day. I definitely don't recommend that for the Hoyas. I find that they actually prefer bright indirect light. Despite being in the harsh summer sun, this Hoya Ruthie has grown quite nicely. Look at this tendril. Next we've got Hoya Sunrise. Now although this one's been in the sun quite a bit this summer, the leaves haven't reddened up significantly. The leaves do have signs of sun stressing, but not as much as I'd hoped for. One of the things I've found with my Hoyas this summer, with keeping them on the balcony, I have to water them every day. Being in the direct sun each day, they do get quite thirsty. Next we've got Hoya Mayakopa Purple. Now this is the one I was looking forward to this summer being in the sun. Apparently it's supposed to be more of a purpley hue when it's sun stressed. No purpley hue on this one and a few of the leaves did get scorched quite a bit from being in the sun. Next, it's Hoya Mindarensis Yellow. This one got scorched quite a bit. Now, although it was scorched significantly, you can see by this leaf, it's grown the best it's grown for me in all the years I've had this plant in my care. She's got three new tendrils as well as two peduncles. Just fantastic. Now take a look at this peduncle. A few of the buds have blast, maybe one or two will survive, but the second peduncle is looking quite promising. Lots of green little buds on this peduncle, so fingers crossed that this one will give me multiple flowers. This plant has bloomed in the past, and guess what? Only one flower produced, which I was quite excited about because I did wait a few years for this to bloom. Next, we've got Hoya Pachaclada Red Corona. Now, this one hasn't done anything all summer, and probably because it's in full sun. It did produce a little peduncle in spring, but hasn't developed any flowers over the summer. Um, thinking if this one was in bright shade, it probably would have bloomed or maybe worked on some vines. Hoya pubicalyx, one of my favorite Hoyas. This one's a tough Hoya. It hasn't slowed down its growth at all from being in full sun all summer. Full sun is quite evident on the leaves here. They're quite bleached and a few scorched leaves. Hoya Curtisia has been loving it on the balcony. A few bleach leaves on the top, but look at all those tendrils. She's been growing like crazy. I find that this Hoya really appreciates getting a bit of water every day. It certainly likes it moist.
Next we've got Hoya Multiflora and this one hasn't bloomed all summer. It's known to be an easy blooming Hoya but this one hasn't bloomed probably because it's been in so much sun all summer and really stressed but despite not blooming and being in a lot of sun she's branched. That's quite exciting. All these branches have grown over the summer. So far I've only seen one mealybug on the leaves, so I have to say I'm doing pretty good this summer for pest control. The nighttime temperatures are getting quite cool in Toronto, so I think I'm going to leave these guys outside for the next two weeks. Over the next two weeks, I will be washing down their leaves with a bit of dish soap and hydrogen peroxide to get any bugs. Once they're inside, I'm going to treat them with a little bit of systemic to keep the milly bugs at bay. We've got another pubicalyx. I received this one as a gift when I placed my import order with AH Oya. They included this one as the gift. And you can see it's quite unruly. It's tendrilled quite a bit throughout all the plants. I like this about the pubicalyx, they've got a mind of their own, you can't keep them under control, they just grow as they please. <laughs> I definitely need to repot this Hoya. I'll probably combine it with the other pubicalyx. This Hoya has been in this pot for about a year. Take a look at this beauty, it's the Hoya Callistophylla. This one has been such a treat to grow. I find that it's very easy to bloom. For me, the trick to get this one to bloom is the sun. It likes a lot of sun. It's currently in bloom and plant friends. The bloom is quite stinky. It smells like burnt rubber. This plant has a lot of peduncles. It's been giving blooms almost every three months for the last two years. Now with this plant blooming so often, she produces a lot of sugar sap and I find that sugar sap is quite messy and it's also a magnet for the mealybugs. Hoya viola has grown quite a bit this summer. It's impressive. This plant has doubled in size. She's tendered out quite nicely. I am so happy with this beauty. Now, not a lot of scorching on the leaves, probably because it's surrounded by multiple plants and getting a lot of shade, but it's been very bright and I'm thinking the plant really enjoyed that this summer. Over the summer I've been watering these plants every day, but once a week I give them feed. I put a few drops of Super Thrive in their water. Wow, I'm amazed by the amount of growth on this plant. Just wonderful. Next is the Hoya obovada variegata, one of my favorite Hoyas. I love the leaves on this beauty. The variegation is absolutely amazing and the flowers are quite beautiful. 
she's bloomed quite a few times over the years. No blooms this summer, but she's worked on this vine, which has a few peduncles. So fingers crossed for some blooms over the fall. Hoya Illigerum probably getting the most shade out of all of the Hoyas and it shows she's got a lot of new leaves. This Hoya has leafed out quite a bit over the summer. I can tell the new leaves. All the new leaves are dark, nice and lush. No blooms this summer. This plot has spent all its summer working on new leaves, but she has bloomed before. She's a summer blooming Hoya and the blooms are spectacular. Now this is a Hoya I also imported from AH Hoya. It's the Hoya Macrophylla Snow Queen Splash. Now she's had a nice summer. This new vine is quite tangled. Plant friends, this is quite exciting. I love when the Hoyas shoot out this wonderful tendril and over time they work on filling out with leaves. No peduncles on this beauty just yet. I'm hoping this tendril might produce some peduncles once it leaves out. For now, I'll just enjoy these beautiful splashy leaves. Here's Hoya Pachaclata with the inner variegation. This one can be quite finicky sometimes. I find if I don't keep this plant moist, it starts to drop leaves. Over the winter, this plant will be growing in the IKEA cabinet where I can ensure that she's getting a lot of warmth and a lot of humidity. Hopefully over the winter, she won't drop any leaves. She's got a few tiny little peduncles, so I'm hoping over the winter these little peduncles will develop and probably give me some blooms. This is a little greenhouse that I keep my Hoyas in over the winter. I've moved it out to the balcony this summer and kept it open to keep the plants from roasting, but Hoya rotundiflora did not like it at all. This is the Hoya that's pouted the most this summer. It probably likes cooler growing temperatures. It will definitely enjoy being moved back inside over the fall. Over the spring, she produced these tendrils and over the summer, she stopped growing. She's produced no new leaves. Now the next two Hoyas, I think they thrive the most. They're Hoya Astralis. Look at this beauty. She's tendril out quite a bit and working a lot of new leaves. Definitely a retrellising needed for this beauty. A few scorched leaves, but overall this plant enjoyed the humidity, the heat, and the sun from the summer. Now Hoya Astralis, they tend to bloom in cool weather, so I'm hoping to see some peduncles over the fall and maybe some blooms this winter.
Next we've got the Hoya Astralis Lisa. Now this one does not have the shiny leaves. The leaves are nice and fuzzy. I'm wondering if this one is still called Hoya Astralis Lisa. These Hoya Astralis has had their best growing season ever. So next year I'll be doing the same thing. A lot of sun and a lot of humidity. Now here's another Hoya that did not appreciate a lot of sun and heat this summer. It's the Hoya Fungii. With that being said, I'm hoping that this Hoya is going to work on this new vine over the winter. It is getting a little bit cooler and I think this new growth has been triggered by the cooler temperatures. So fingers crossed for a lot of growth this winter. Now this is one of the Hoyas that I had purchased from AAH Hoya. I like these Hoyas because they tend to have bigger leaves and I'm quite into those big leaf Hoyas. The variegated Hoya Kentiana does not skip a beat. I find that this Hoya grows no matter the conditions. Many years ago I received this as a tiny little cutting, about 5 nodes, which I spread across the top of the pot and over the years it's flourished. Next we've got Hoya CV Jennifer and she's given some new leaves this summer. Now the leaves that are more exposed to the sun are quite bleach so this is definitely a Hoya that I'm going to keep in a more shady spot next summer. Hoya Imperialis Palawan had a few setbacks last winter. It was quite ravaged by mealybugs. So to see it pushing out a new tendril and working on a lot of new growth, it's quite exciting. A big improvement compared to last winter. I'll definitely need to trellis up this beauty. I'm so excited about all this new growth. Hoya Memoria hasn't enjoyed her time on the balcony this summer. She's got a tendril that's died back completely. And a few bleached out leaves from being in a too sunny location. Looks like she's already appreciating the cooler temperatures in September. She's working on a new tendril, so a replacement uh, for the tendril that's lost. The last Hoya in this little greenhouse is the Hoya Macrophylla Big Leaf. I absolutely love the thick succulent like leaves of this Hoya and the leaves can get quite big but she's been in the sun quite a bit so you can see a lot of sun stressing. I can see some active grow tips at the node so I'm hoping that she's gonna branch out and give me some nice long tendrils. I should trellis up this beauty. I've got four more Hoyas on the balcony. They're quite tangled together. Let's have a look. 
Okay, so the Hoya Obscura has rooted itself into the pot for the Hoya Elwigiana, which is not a bad thing because I could use more cuttings of the Hoya Obscura. I find the Hoya Elwigiana to be quite slow growing, lots of activity at the node, but she's taking her own sweet time to produce new leaves. Hoya Obscura has a peduncle, fingers crossed that it does not blast. I'd love to see flowers on this plant. The sun's dressing is absolutely gorgeous, but she's had a bit too much sun, so next year I'll try a different strategy for these Hoyas on the balcony. Now I knew the moment I put this Hoya Palinora outside that she was not going to like it at all, but I had to try and see how it worked out for this Hoya this summer. Lots of sunburn, but she survived and she's working on some new growth. I think the new growth is due to the cooler September temperatures. We've had significantly cooler nights, plus we've had more cloudy days this September. Lots of sunburn on the Hoya Acuta variegata, but the most growth I've had on this plant since it's been in my collection. So less sun, more heat for this beauty. Plant friends, the Hoyas were quite stressed this summer on the balcony. They definitely don't like direct sun. What they like and thrive in is very bright conditions, as bright as possible without direct sun. And they also enjoy the humidity and the warmth. Now let's have a look at a few Hoyas that I kept in the IKEA cabinet over the summer. Here's the Hoya Macrophylla Pot of Gold. Now this is the most this Hoya has grown for me and it's in the right conditions. Very bright, very warm, and very humid. The leaves are absolutely gorgeous. It's working on a new tendril and being indoors out of the elements, the leaves are perfect. I haven't repotted this plant since I purchased it and it was 40 bucks back then. It's been about 3 years and I purchased it at Vandermeer. Next we've got the Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost. This is such a treat to have in my collection. I really enjoy the foliage on this plant. Now a lot of people say this is fast growing but I find this to be a slow growing Hoya. It's given some new leaves, but no long beautiful tendril. Maybe I should repot this and probably add a trellis. Next plant is the Hoya Quinquinervia, and I purchased this beauty from Centered by Plants last summer. I haven't repotted this beauty yet, but she's thrived over the summer. She's produced a lot of new leaves. All these bright, beautiful, shiny green leaves are all new. She's tendrilling out quite nicely. Her new leaf is a little bit sun stressed from being so close to the grow light. The sun stressing is beautiful. Imagine the entire plant sun stressed.
Normally I would put this Pachaclada album Marginata on the balcony, but over the years she's done nothing and this summer has been a charm with the IKEA cabinet. She's pushed out three new leaves and that little vine, that's all new this summer. This area of the IKEA cabinet is very bright, very hot, and I keep it very humid. And something that I tried with this plant is to keep it moist. I actually don't let it dry out at all. I keep it slightly moist all the time. She seems to enjoy the same conditions as the Hoya Imbricata. Hoya Imbricata is a strange beauty, but I absolutely love the way this plant grows. The growing conditions that this plant needs is quite extreme. It likes it very bright, it likes it very humid, and it likes it very warm. Without those three conditions, this plant does not thrive. Winter is when I experience dieback on this plant, but once summer hit and she gets the conditions that she needs to thrive, that's when she starts to throw out a lot of tendrils. After the tendrils, she produces her leaves and starts to devour the pot. She's been very happy over the years. Now friends, this summer she produced a peduncle, but guess what? I accidentally knocked the peduncle off. It was devastating, but it's a learning lesson. Now I know what to do to keep this plant happy, and hopefully next summer she'll produce a peduncle. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thanks for watching Plant Friends. Remember to like, subscribe and comment and follow me on Instagram at Life of Bellina.